Did you know that you can use 3D printing to create custom packaging for your products? If you're just getting started with an online store or selling 3D prints, sourcing packaging that perfectly fits your products can be difficult. In today's tutorial, I'll show you all the steps involved so you can do this yourself, starting with the design, onto slicing, and finally the 3D printing. So 3D printed packaging is kind of unusual and you don't really see it in daily life. So why are we using it for our Quinley products? First of all, 3D printing our own packaging is actually the cheapest option. Custom cardboard or foam packaging tends to start at 500 to 1000 pieces for your minimum order quantity. Um, and so your first order can cost thousands of dollars because most suppliers will charge a substantial startup fee. And for most small businesses, this is kind of infeasible. Um, and to give you an idea, these packaging inserts cost us about $3 a piece uh, compared to cardboard or foam, which will range from $4 to $6 a piece. The second reason is we can 3D print these on demand using our automated print farm. Um, so if we had to buy a thousand custom foam or cardboard inserts, they would take up a lot of space in our small office. Uh, since we're 3D printing these on demand, we don't need to worry about storage. Additionally, it's much better for cash flow reasons, since you don't, we don't need to have our money locked up in cardboard or foam that's sitting in the corner collecting dust. We can just print these when we need it and not have to worry about wasting our money. Finally, 3D printed packaging material is a sustainable alternative to options such as foam. It can be a good excuse to use up old rolls of PLA that you weren't going to use for anything else. Uh, or you can get biodegradable or recycled options uh, to limit the environmental impact. And for us, from this month onward, we're going to be using recycled PLA in all of our packaging material. So I've got our part inside Cura here, and you can design this using any CAD software that you're comfortable with. But I'll just show you a few things that we've done to make this 3D printable and useful as a packaging insert. The first thing to notice is that there are cutouts everywhere shaped for the parts that are supposed to go inside. So if you have 3D prints, you also have a CAD file for them. And so you can usually use something like an offset tool just to create a large, uh, slightly larger gap just around the edge of the part so that they, they fit in. Another feature of the model is the corrugations on the side right here, and these add stiffness to the part. It actually wouldn't really be possible to use these as packaging material without the corrugations. It just falls apart and is really floppy otherwise. So the corrugations are super important. Another important detail here is some of these edges are really close to each other. When they're sliced, they'll actually connect. So this edge here and this edge up here, those will all connect when the part is sliced. So when it comes to slicing, you can see there are these really small gaps that I put there so that when I slice it in phase mode, it'll become a single closed loop. So it'll be able to do the whole thing without retracting. And when it comes to the slicer settings, I use a really thick layer height, so 0.5 millimeters. And we're using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on our Ender 3. And for the first layer, we do a really thick line, so 150% extrusion width, and that lets the line be really thick so it sticks to the plate really well. Another important one is we don't have any top or bottom layers because it's not useful as a packing material to have bottom layers on this. And you can see in the preview, it's hollow. So all of that solid material in between the gaps is gone. Another important point is when we have these little gaps between the walls, some of them will be close enough that they're actually touching. And this actually adds quite a lot of strength to the part. So it's important when you design, have some areas which are very close to the wall, so have some very thin sections, as you can see here. And once you add the corrugations, they'll kind of merge together in a way, so that when it actually prints, the part stays stuck. And it's an hour and a half long print using 72 grams of material. And the other side is about the same, so it ends up being 150 grams of PLA for one of our packaging inserts. So we're 3D printing these on our automated Quinley farm in our office. 
you can see that we're not using a skirt and that helps save our time because we don't need to post process them. And the nice thing about using our automated Quinleys is that we can set 15 or 20 of these going before we leave. And in the morning, we have just a pile of them ready to use. So if you've liked this video so far, please hit the subscribe button and like the video. It really helps us out and it helps us produce more content. Now back to the video. So just to recap, the reason why you might want to try 3D printing your packaging is, first of all, if you can't get any, if you can't find anything that really suits your need, you have full creative freedom to design and print it using some of the things you learned in this video. Another reason you might want to use 3D printed packaging is the ability to print on demand. So you don't have to buy a thousand, you don't have to buy 500, you can just print what you need when you need it. Everyone's product is different, so you might come up with something a little bit different than what I showed today, but hopefully this video gave you some ideas for how to use 3D printing to design packaging for your custom products.